Okay, so we've talked about leadership, we've talked about culture of candor, research, resources. Uh, we're going to get specifically into those parts of the continuous improvement process, assessing, creating plans and tasks, monitoring and sustainability. And keep in mind, make sure you take notes so you do good on your test activity after lunch. Uh, these are just some examples of the indicators at the school level, in case some of you at the district level do not know what those are. Uh, the leadership team shares the decisions of real substance pertaining to curriculum, instruction, professional development. Who thinks, that, who thinks that's a given? Right? That they should be doing that. It's a successful practice. How about the leadership, the, the principal develops the leadership capacity of others in the school, right? Shared leadership. Again, we're all about <coughs> building capacity. If that principal is such a good principal, we want to keep the knowledge of what he did or she did to make her so successful because we want to utilize you know, that information and to be able to duplicate it. I always say that when we're working towards sustainability, and you have a plan, it's so that you can duplicate those successes over and over and over. Um, units of instruction include pre and post tests to assess student mastery. I mean, that's an easy way to gauge if kids are doing this or not. That's a highly effective indicator. Okay, so for the next couple of slides, you're gonna see two sides to each of the slides. One side is how a leadership team functions. And the other side of the equation is kind of what the system asks you to do or enter into the system. And I'm going to talk about why. So you'll see some, some duplication here on each of the slides for assessing, creating plans, and monitoring. And those are the first check marks on the side. You're continually going to be revisiting the wise ways research. You may assess at today's meeting and you may not create a plan for five weeks. So you need to what? Revisit the, the research, the wise ways, right? Have a conversation. You're going to know these wise ways inside and out. I promise you. <laughs> you're going to utilize the wise ways. You're going to every single time engage in a culture of candor and have that conversation. When you assess, you have to figure out what does this even mean? Sometimes People look at the indicators and say, well, there's 88 because they're written so simple. Like, all teachers engage all students. Well, yeah, that should happen, right? Does it happen? No. We need to make sure that we are that simple so we're not skipping over the fact that all students or all teachers should engage all students. That's why the indicators are so simple in nature. We want them to be plain language behavioral. One thing, okay? So when we're acquiring a deep understanding of the practice and your teams are having conversations, make sure they stick to that indicator. There are clusters of indicators, but we really want to get one indicator done, so let's get that one done, and if the conversation promotes itself into another indicator, well, let's look at that one as well. We might as well cluster some of those indicators and work on a few of them at one time because your ultimate goal is to implement those effective practices. Those are what make you successful. That's your ultimate goal, kind of like a SMART goal. You have your SMART goal and then you have the things you do to reach your SMART goal. Those effective practices are our, 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 our goals. <laughs> so we're, we're trying to reach those. And then, of course, the team has to figure out where they are right now. Whether you're a district team or a school team, part of assessing is finding your point A. Where are we at right now? Don't sugarcoat it. If the indicator was the principal spends 50% of his or her time in classroom instruction with teachers, and you have a conversation and you say, yeah, I don't think the principal, we've decided the principal doesn't quite spend 50% of his time. The answer might be that the principal spends a lot of time in the classroom, we're just not sure how much. That can be your answer. That's where you are. That's your point A. It's your reality, right? In the system, technically speaking, it's going to ask you a few 
you're at no development, limited, or full. Full implementation means that you are fully and effectively implementing these effective practices and you have a sustainable plan, okay, to duplicate this in the future. Not everybody is going to be at full implementation right away. In fact, most schools that do this system aren't at full implementation at the very beginning because a lot of them don't have sustainable plans in place. And it is absolutely okay to not be at full implementation. Honestly, when the state looks at plans, if we see schools that have, or districts that have everything fully implemented right off the bat, you are gonna draw way more attention than you want, right? Because, here's the bad part. If you say you're fully implemented on all of these effective practices, that indicator will never move over to the planning process, which means your team can never create a plan to get better. And that's really an injustice to the adults and the students in your buildings, right? So we are absolutely okay with you going for version B, which is limited development. Because you're saying as a team, we wanna get better. We wanna do something more to build sustainability and to effectively implement these processes. So we're going to plan to make it better, okay? When you do, as a team, this is kind of where the local innovation comes in. Not only do you get to choose which indicators you want, you get to prioritize for yourself as a district or school which one you want to, which one's a higher priority. Every school's different, every district's different. So the team decides, let's say for an example, the team over the course of several meetings assessed 10 indicators. Well, you can't certainly choose to work all 10 of them at one time or 15 at one time, right? So we're gonna prioritize, which ones should we work on now? Let's prioritize for ourselves, which ones are high priority. So the choice there is just high, medium, or low priority, no big deal. Opportunity score is very important for the district, and I'll tell you why. School teams and district teams have the chance to put an opportunity score. So not only are they saying these are high priority, low or medium, but they also get to say, and this is how easy for us it is for us to implement. One of the choices is, it's pretty easy, we can do this fairly soon, fairly simple. The second choice is, it might take a little bit longer, but we can do it within our current constraints. And the third choice is, we are gonna have to wait for more money or for policies to change. So as a district, if you looked at all of your schools, and you saw indicator IBO2 was high priority for all of your schools, and the chance of them being able to implement it was slim to none. That's your opportunity as a district to figure out what you can do to support your schools on a high priority that right now they can't quite get done. Does that make sense? Like maybe they need a little bit more flexibility and maybe that's something that schools can get from you. You can make things a little more flexible. For example, um, instructional teams meeting um, for blocks of time. Sometimes in a lot of schools or in a lot of districts, you can't do that. You might have to switch up the schedule. It might be a priority for, um, for those schools, but they just don't have it right now in their policy to do that. So that's something the district could look at and figure out how can we make that available for our schools. Since we're on the tool is cool side of, of this slide, I always think it's great that the <coughs> priority and opportunity score are factored into an algorithm that result in an index score. And the index score sort of prioritizes um, where teams might start their work. If you have a high index score, an op a priority score of three times an opportunity score of a three, you have a nine, that might be where you want to invest some time and energy because you might get a quick win. If you don't get any quick wins in the process, people are not as apt to come back to the process. Again, my diet analogy. If I'm like working a food plan for two weeks and I don't get any results, do I want to do that again for another two weeks? Absolutely not. You gotta feel the results. You gotta get some results and get some quick wins. 
So when you see that high index score, the priority times the opportunity, and the tool, and the tool does this for us, um, look for some of those nines and get your teams to work on some of those nines. Those are going to be quick wins. And then, of course, the system is just going to ask you to write your point A, your reality. What does it look like right now? Then we go on to create a plan. So any of those indicators that you said were not fully and effectively implemented and you had a sustainable plan, your teams get the opportunity to choose which ones to create plans for. When we're creating the plans again, using the wise ways, having the conversations, figuring out what the indicator actually means. And we're going to determine also what type of data and evidence we should be gathering for sustainability purposes right, and implementation purposes. It's better to think of those things now than to wait until you get to the end and you say, oh shoot, now how are we gonna know if we did it or not, right? So that's part of figuring out what success looks like. What are the things we're going to need to measure the success of the implementation of this process? So thinking about it when you're creating the plan is such a great idea. So for these plans, technically speaking, in the system, a leadership team member will be assigned to do the job, or I'm sorry, to manage and monitor the plan. That does not mean that team member is going to do all of the work, okay? The plan is your goal. We're going to create tasks, which are your action steps. And those are the things that we can farm out to the rest of the school community. Team members can take parts of them, other teachers can take some, custodians, librarians, parents, students, whoever you can, who can help and assist in that implementation, we're going to give those tasks to. Um, after we assign a team member to be responsible for, responsible for it, um, I'm going to skip down to the middle one. We want to describe what the objective is going to look like in our school. So the research gives us a basis for looking or for knowing what success looks like. Tailor it to your school or district. What do you want it to look like in your district? What do you want it to look like in your school? And write the descriptor there and make sure to include the evidence and the data that you're going to utilize. Now I'm going to go back up one. We're also going to set a target date. So when do we think that we can get this objective or this indicator implemented by? When do we think we can get this done by? Make sure you're realistic. We've had a school who said everything for the year 2052. <laughs> there was no sense of urgency, right? And they said we didn't want to pressure ourselves. There has to be a sense of urgency, right? We've also seen schools, and now you might not laugh because you may be guilty. We've seen schools and districts set everything, the target dates for May 15th, because that's what? End of the year, right? Be realistic. You're going to set yourself up for failure in the process if you say, oh, let's just get everything done by the end of the year. How about if you can get something done by November 1st, you set the target date and your goal for yourself for November 1st. If something's going to take four months, set the target date for four months. Be realistic. Okay, what happens if four months comes down the road and you say, uh-oh, Judy, we're not done yet. What do you do? You make a new one. You make a new target date. You have a conversation. You figure out how much longer it's going to take us, and you just set a new target date. But make sure they're realistic, and I will go in and check and make sure nobody put in the year 2052. And then... The next thing is to create tasks to reach your objective. So you have your point A, which is your assessment. You have your point B, which is your plan or your objective. And now we're going to create the steps to get us from A to B. But before we do that, this is a great piece of information, especially for support people to schools, as well as support people to districts. When we're creating our plans or what the objective will look like, it is so important for sustainability to think about these questions. So one, I would make sure that your school teams are doing it for themselves, that they have this information. And two, make sure as a district team you're writing your plans like this. Be specific, who doesn't? You can't say, we spend 50% of the time in classrooms. 
Who specifically does that? The principal, right? Um, what do they do specifically? Say exactly what they do. You want to be able to duplicate the same successful process, so be specific. How often do they do it? I always make the joke that I have three teenagers, two boys and a girl, and if I said they, both, they all take showers on a regular basis, there's a huge discrepancy from when my daughter takes a shower, which is every day, and my boys. You know, which is like, oh, let's take it every week, you know. Regular basis, you have to be specific about when they do it. Is it every other Thursday? Is it every two weeks? Is it once a month? Be very specific about how often it happens. And then again, make sure they include evidence and a sustainable plan. If we talk about some of those indicators at the school level that says all teachers do this, and there's an action there. If we get all of our teachers on board this year, and all of our teachers are successfully doing this, how do we make sure that next year when we have 13 new teachers, they know those policies and procedures? What are we gonna do? Maybe at our teacher orientation or retreat in the summer, we make sure to include these policies and procedures, right? So that everybody starts off on the same page that everybody is doing it. And then again, part of that sustainability is monitoring to make sure it's happening. When we're talking about tasks, this one is really kind of personal to me and I'm always um, pushing this one. Tasks have to be simple and they have to be specific. This is where it can all fall apart for schools. This is where they get down in the dumps and they can never seem to get progress. They feel like they're spinning their wheels. And here's the problem. It's because in, their tasks are not specific and actionable. You have to be able to check things off. If you start looking through your school's plans and sometimes even your district plans, tasks should be specific, simple, actionable steps, okay? Sometimes people get overwhelmed because they just want to make one task for their objective. And so their task is this long. I had a, a coach call one day and said, my school's getting nowhere, they're getting frustrated, can you please take a look and give me some advice? They had one task for each objective and it was this long. Like a page and a half long. So I asked the coach to go in and every time she saw the word and, or a period, she was to start a brand new task. These schools were sitting at 0% progress for years. I mean, they, had, they were seeing no progress. So I also asked her after she took out the word or made a new task for every time she saw the word and or a period, there were 17 tasks. And now I said, now go in and mark all of them complete that are complete. They went to 87% progress. So can you imagine going through the year? It's better to see 10%, 20%, 30%. We have momentum, we're moving forward, we're progressing. But if you sat on 0% until you got this giant paragraph done, you're gonna get down in the dumps. You're not going to want to, you're gonna say this is not working. So for those tasks, go in there. It doesn't matter if there's three tasks or 23 tasks. That if that's the work it's going to take, make sure they're making them simple and making them specific. I always say make them sure they're check offable. And I know that's not a real word, but it's my word, right? Make sure they're check offable. Each of those tasks, again, you have to assign it to somebody, use the school community. If you need to make a database, and there's some kids in class who are taking a web development class. And you say, you know what, maybe I'll give you extra credit. Could you create a database for our leadership team because we need to house a survey information or something? Uh, if you need to put a bulletin board in the hallway, ask the custodian to put up the bulletin board. Make sure to check it off, right? Those are actionable steps. And then, of course, each of those tasks should lead to the achievement of the objective. A lot of times you will realize that you made a mistake. And some of those tasks did not lead to the completion of your objective. <coughs> Don't erase them. Put a note in there that said, 
eh, you were wrong, this didn't really help. Put a note in there that says why it didn't work. We need to keep all of that history in the system so we don't make the same mistakes again. So that we know what worked and what didn't work. That is, it's crucial information, it's important information for us, okay? Stephanie's recipe for tasks is very similar to what people are already very familiar with, smart goals, right? So let's just make them smart tasks. They're going to be specific, measurable, like what's success going to look like, attainable, realistic, and timely. I had a superintendent tell me all their tasks were pushed off for two years, only two years. And he said, well, I'm going to be gone by then. I'll be retired, not my problem. So, I, you know, again, this timeliness. We had a gal in Topeka last week at Coach, and she said, I love making lists. She said, because I love, and she said, in fact, I put tasks on there that I know I can do right away because I love checking them off. Makes me feel good. So if you have a task that's never attainable, you're never going get to get the feel-good feeling. And then the last part, but very important part, is monitoring the implementation of the plans. So once leadership teams have created even one task or multiple tasks, there should not be a leadership team meeting that happens where the team is not looking at the tasks report. The task report will show you all of the items that you created as tasks, and that's your work. That's what you're saying you need to do to implement these successful practices. So make sure to include the task report in every single leadership team meeting. And you'll notice as you, as you start working and checking some of those tasks completed, they don't fall off the list. And it's because you have to sustain those efforts. You have to make sure that if some of those tasks are things that happen throughout the year, that we're continuing to do those things throughout the year. So we put them there, keep them there as a reminder to you that you have to monitor always for sustainability. So again, you're going to review the tasks at every single leadership team meeting. Um, that doesn't mean you stop assessing and creating plans for others. We're going to do all of this simultaneously. You're going to get into a rhythm where you mark one of the objectives completed, and you're going to go pick up another indicator, whichever one you want, or one that you know you need to work on, a focus area, right? That's how continuous improvement works. You're implementing, you're assessing, you're <coughs> monitoring all at the same time, and you're kind of juggling all of that work. But the great thing about it is you don't have to wait till the end of the year to see success. You're building processes throughout the year and implementing throughout the year. Um, as you start marking these tasks off uh, and giving them completion dates, sometimes you're going to get to the last task that you created, and process managers may know this. The system's going to pop up a message that says, hey, hello. All your tasks are completed. Are you done? Did your team finally reach full and effective implementation? There's a little pop-up message and there's three choices. The first choice is undecided. And I'll tell you when that gets chosen. Sometimes the process manager is sitting at his or her desk and they put in that last completion date and this pops up and they're like, oh gosh, I don't know. Let's just check undecided and we'll ask the team later. That's what it's there for. The other decision, or you might choose undecided because your team needs more information. You need to gather more data to make a final decision. So you can check undecided. The other two choices are, you know what? We're not there yet. We need more work. We've had a conversation. We thought we'd be there. But we really decided we need a little bit more work to do. No big deal. Go back and add tasks. Add one task or two tasks. Figure out as a team what else you need to do and go back and add a new task. The third choice is a little bit more complicated because you have had a conversation as a team. You've reread the Wise Ways research. You've decided that one, we have fully and effectively implemented the indicator. And two, we have a sustainable plan. The system will ask you to input that information. It looks like it's done. You have a sustainable plan. It's effectively implemented. You have to continue to monitor these 
practices to make sure you don't like fall off the wagon, right? That you don't get off course, that something didn't get, a, you know, kind of out of whack. But if it did and you're monitoring these practices that you did implement, go back and look at the history and figure out what piece you're not doing anymore. You have the information and just open the indicator or the objective back up and make a new task or make a new goal, okay? It's really easy to go back in there and just open something back up. And we talk about sustainability. Your job or your role in support is a huge one. You need to ask them, how do you know? So if they mark something as fully implemented, whether at the beginning or the objective is met, how do you know? What data did you guys look at? Um, what is the plan for sustainability? They have to know how they made that decision and what data that they used to, to determine that, okay? And then sustainability is about continuing to monitor. We just talked about that throughout the lifetime that you are in education and you're working with a school that has a continuous improvement plan, you have to continue to monitor for um, implementation. Continue to look at the data, continue to reinforce and evaluate the practices of the teachers, the leaders, the practitioners in your building, and continue to gather evidence. Things do change over the years, so you're going to continue to gather the evidence to show that you're implementing. And this is the last slide. We'll embed this in our brains before we go to lunch so we can do the activity and test when we get back, right? This is what continuous improvement really looks like and what we've really been trying to implement or instill today in your, in your mind is that leadership teams meet twice a month for at least an hour. During those meetings, they're continuously assessing, planning, monitoring, implementing, and sustaining practices. They're using data, gathering it, analyzing it, figuring out how to utilize it, using research and having conversations, and then receiving ongoing coaching support and feedback. We know it's as much important to districts to receive feedback, so the state's working on providing feedback, uh, as it is to schools. And again, with the new ESSA, that really falls on the district. So you guys are kind of getting ahead of the game a year ahead before it comes, you know, requirement. We really want to build capacity and see districts support their schools, provide feedback to their schools. Came up with the handbook. Okay, we're gonna get started. We're going to do an activity. And in the middle of your tables, there's an object. All right. If you have an object on your table, I want you to quickly, real quick, assign somebody to be process manager and take some notes down. I'm going to give you the instructions. Point the finger at the other person. Go. Okay, ready? Okay, let's go ahead and take notes. Writing down the instructions, here's the instructions. Your team is going to take your object and make three connections to Indostar, Continuous Improvement, Axip, this whole process. Three connections. Now, here's where I get the, oh, you're kidding. Then I want you to make a 30 second or less jingle, commercial, song, poem about those connections, okay? And the whole team has to participate. <laughs> I got words. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay, so All right, everybody got it? Raise your hand if you understand. Everybody got it? You understand? Okay. All right. We're going to give you about 15, 20 minutes. Use your computers, YouTube, whatever, when it comes to the jingle, the commercial, the sing, the poem, whatever. Ready, go. All right, we're going to come back together, and we are going to ask you to come up to the front and present. It's, and the microphone is on, it's up on the stage here. You don't have to get on the stage, but if you'd like.
like the stage. Who wants to volunteer to come first? That table over here. I think this table one over here. Uh, what we're going to have you do is tell us what object you got. Make your Make sure you guys do it right here, please. Right there, somewhere. Okay, make sure you guys get up here all in the frame. You gotta stand up. Okay, our object is a round plate and it has five holes on it and the shape of our object, the fact that it is a play, and the holes all have a specific representation. And we used technology. We use technology because we entered it all in technology as a means of thank you, of communicating it to y'all. So we're using the technology and utilizing it the best way possible. So here we go. And the process goes round and round. Rechargeable so that you can evaluate where you're at in your plan and go back and make adjustments and recharge if necessary. And it has multi purposes so you can um, differentiate very easily with it depending on what you want to use it for. So then we decided that with all that we had energy, and E stands for evaluation, the N stands for needs assessment. The E is effective. R is relevant. And the G is goal oriented. So therefore, you, you assess, assess, you plan, plan you monitor, and you sustain. We lose keys and we find keys and we get new keys. We just have to find the ones that unlock the right doors 
Sometimes we have keys, but we don't know what door they fit. That can be the hardest part, putting the right key in the right door. We've got a brand new pair for improvement. You've got the missing key. <laughs> We'll have to apologize right off the bat because we don't have any song with ours at, at all whatsoever. We, we do have a bar of soap in the package. And so to just to kind of give you a little context, we're going to do a little role play of maybe kind of an initial leadership team meeting where our access process is being first introduced. Okay, faculty, does everyone know we're going to get to use In the Star this year? What the friend? <laughs> Son of a very <laughs> What the Bob? Okay, so <laughs> we, we may need to use this bar of soap to clean this process up just a little bit. So. We made three connections with this bar of soap. Uh, it may need to go in some mouths uh, at first, but this, this really is gonna kind of symbolize our school improvement process. Uh, it looks really nice in the package, uh, but our plan in order to have any kind of effect at all, we're gonna actually have to take it out and use it, right, for its intended purpose. So as nice as it might look or smell in this package, it's only gonna clean things up if we actually take it out and apply it. We're gonna be applying it on a regular basis as well. It has to be sustainable. We're not gonna take one shower. Uh, we're gonna take multiple showers uh, to uh, actually get the results that we wanna see. So that's gonna involve monitoring our progress along the way. Life is messy, school is messy, and so it's gonna take the application a number of times. And eventually this bar of soap is going to be, uh, what's, the, what's the word I'm looking for, exhausted, uh, it's, it's gonna run out. We're gonna have to develop another plan that's appropriate for uh, where we are right now. So, uh, and when it gets really down to it, we can use it to rinse out our mammals after this faculty meeting if we need to, so. The last group almost made me cry. Do you remember the moms used to actually do that to kids? Oh, like, yeah. you know, put a bar of soap in their mouth? Like, oh my gosh. My mom used liquid soap because I would just scrape the other stuff off. <laughs> All right, which other team would like to volunteer? Okay. Y'all have to do it. Okay, there we go. I was going to say the last team almost made me cry, and then this one really made me cry. <laughs> We're not going. We're not going. Don't make me cry. No. <laughs> okay, to introduce you to our object, have you seen these before, the chatter team? Okay, so we have the chatter team. We decided for school improvement we needed to keep smiling and that we needed to tackle it one bite at a time. And we're going to let it wind it up and let it roar. And as the leaders in the old accent process, we've learned now in the new accent process that we need to smile more and talk less. So once our indicators are fully implemented with our sustainable plan, we will be.
gonna go buy I, it. You know, I need a royalty for this performance. <laughs> And I'll tell you how. That loop around your finger, that's like the leadership team because that's the first most important thing in getting things going, the leadership team. And look at that string. You know what? That's like the wise ways research because you need the string to wrap around everything. You need research to wrap around the plan to make sure that it'll be successful. And last is the up and down movement. It's fluid to show that the accept and leadership has to change as we go through the year. So if the plan is sustainable, it should continue to work. So let's see if it does. <laughs> Reaching building capacity. Students, teachers, administrators are monitored. Restructuring, bending, remolding, and assessing. Malleable, collaborative, and disarmed. gone yet. We have this team and then just one more team back there. Double check. <laughs> All right team, I want you to mark your calendars. We're going to meet twice a month for one hour. talking about innovation, that if you try something and it doesn't work, that you laugh it off and you move on. <laughs> and we also said that it's a stress ball, and even though it has a big mouth, that we should take it in small bites. So we came up with no stress, the end of star way, taking a bite toward growth each day, not more than you can chew, just choose one or two. Student success is the best kind of pay. Thank you guys very much. That was actually pretty exciting. Oh, we have one more team. One more. One more. No, 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 no. I know. Susan should know better. how we're going from a zero, or is a, a no lack of understanding of the plan, to a 
full understanding of the plan, which is I'm about right here, because I'm new this year, but I'm getting there. And then we have, um, also we can go on our sliding scale from no implementation of our plan to full implementation of our plan, which, which demonstrates the process of the, of the plan itself. And then we also said that you can use it as an angle uh, of perception from the old plan to what the new plan is now. And how we can at some point go full circle to an understanding. Is that what you said? That's right. Okay. So they have a little poem that they're going to read. Or an acrostic, actually. Okay. We, we've, um, we've used a set of words to go along with Indostar. Okay. Implementation, needs assessment, data, indicators, straight line to full circle, tools and tasks, angles of perception, reach understanding. All right, thank you guys very much. Uh, the reason we do this exercise is why? What are we trying to build? Teaming. Teaming. Working together, understanding maybe of the process. Um, it's our way of kind of gauging, are you making the connections? We're also, also trying to make this a little fun, right? I mean, you don't wanna come here and listen to me talk all day and not have some fun. Um, so I appreciate everybody doing this and hopefully you got out of it what you, we intended for you to get out of it.